So welcome to Technodad Life, and my name is Jeff. And so today what we're going to be doing is looking at TrueNest Core, basically installation and setup from a Open Media Vault user's perspective. Now, if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe and hit that notification button. So now on first uh, glance, it seems silly to compare TrueNest uh, scale to Open Media Vault. But actually, they are pretty similar. So basically, the same maintainer who maintained TrueNest Core before they added the scale is the person who started Open Media Vault. And so why he left TrueNest was because they would not switch to Linux. And so he actually started Open Media Vault as a Linux version of TrueNest. Now, 10 years later about, I don't know exactly how long, TrueNAS Core, which is based on Linux and is also based on Debian, just like Open Media Vault, uh, is now on the scene. So let's see how they're similar and different and which one is right for you. So if we just look at their web pages here, we see TrueNAS scale is actually geared more towards uh, business user. So, so scale up or out. So basically, they're talking multiple nodes of TrueNAS to actually deploy. And actually, it says that a little longer, or a little farther down here, single node or a cluster, hybrid cloud, enterprise support options. Now, if we go to Open Media Vault, uh, their things are a little more simple, so basically it runs out of the box, web administrator, and sort of the normal server stuff. Now if we go to download TrueNAS scale, basically here under options, or requirements I should say, it has to have a dual core 64-bit CPU, 8 gigabytes of RAM, 16 recommended, 16 gigabyte boot device, two identical sized devices, a network part, and doesn't require hardware write. So this is a AMD or Intel based system. It does not support ARM. If we go to the Open Media Vault downloads, it immediately takes us to the AMD 64 or Intel 64 downloads. But if you're an ARM fan, there is hope for you. So if we go to ombextras.org, there's actually an install script that you can basically install it on any ARM device. And that is right here. There we go. We can see this line where it says, Open Media Vault Extras facilitates the installation of Open Media Vault, Raspberry Pis, Armbian, and single board computers, and 32-bit and x86 platforms. So this script will help install Open Media Vault on a ARM device. So ARM plus x86 versus TrueNAS scale, just x86. So of course, next you need to download TrueNAS scale or Open Media Vault. And so the one I like using is Etcher, or if you're more uh, savvy, Ventoy. And so I actually have a Ventoy uh, USB drive in there. And so Ventoy, basically, you just copy as many ISOs as you can fit on your USB drive, and you can boot from any which one of those. So here we're installing uh, TrueNest Scale. Now, the interesting part of this is even though it's based on Debian, they don't use a rebranded Debian installer uh, like everybody else. They use their own custom installer. And here we want to just pick Install and then highlight the disk you want to use, and fresh install. And we're going to format the boot drive, then proceed with installation. Set administrator, and then put in our password. And then create swap partition. And then it's time for a cup of coffee. So now we need to take out our USB drive, and then we can reboot. And then scroll down to three reboots, hit enter. 
And then time for another cup of coffee. Okay, boot to true NAS scale. And there it's booting. Okay, so now it's rebooted. And so for us, all we are concerned with right now is the IP address to log into the web portal. But if you're having problems, you can see down below we have different options. So we can configure interfaces, settings, uh, change the administrator password, reset configuration, uh, get to the shell, Linux shell, reboot, or shutdown. But here we just want to log into 242. So to log into TrueNAS scale, we need to put in admin and then our password that we put in as we were setting it up. Click login. And that takes us straight to the dashboard. And here you can see I have 16 gigs of memory. We have the network device. We can check for updates. And over on this side, we can see we have a four core CPU at N5105, two gigahertz, using zero usage. We can check for updates. Let's do that first, since that's front and center. And then it says no updates available. So why does it say check for updates if there's no updates available? Pretty interesting. Okay. And so on the dashboard, you can configure what's on here. So uh, here are the system widgets. And it can show us here. Let's do that. That's our different. We have two uh, network ports on this. We'll put both of those. And we don't want help because we're men. Let's click Save. And there you can go. So a pretty basic setup for the dashboard. And now on OpenMedia Vault, you can change actually quite a few th other things for your dashboard, but let's just move on. So going down to storage, we need to create a pool. And so we'll call this Olympic. Get it? It's an Olympic pool. It's going to be an Olympic size pool. And we don't want encryption, and we're going to click Next. And our layout is going to be a mirror because we just have two drives. And with number devs, V devs, I think that's all OK. Oh, these are all optional. So let's skip actually these. Save and go to review, create pool, confirm, continue. So I am going to do a little checking actually in the bias of this computer and see if we messed up something there. Okay, and so just a little Google foo there. Uh, I checked and it seems because I reused those disks that we need to erase them because it doesn't automatically erase them, uh, which it does actually on Open Media Vault. So, okay, so we are back. We erased those disks. Let's see if we can create a pool now. Okay, so I guess when you're using TrueNAS, you need to make sure your disks are completely empty, erased of everything before starting. Uh, the pools actually got set up very quickly, just a few minutes. Now on Open Media Vault, all we have to do is go down the side here in order, and let's see if that's the same thing we can do here. So we got Olympic grammar. Let's click Create Pool. Let's see what happens over there. Oh, it's the same thing. Uh, they had a different wizard before that actually I liked better than this. Uh, they had that on TrueNest Core. I think it was similar or simpler. Let's see what all these things do. Expand Pool, nope. Export Disconnect, Manage Devices. And so it looks like the default data set is fine. So we'll click shares. We'll add a window share, which I think it's too early because I think we need a path. OK, so here. Let's add data set and path name. So let's type in media. And then inherit everything and then save. So let's see what happens. 
Okay, so now we have a media folder under our Olympic. And so basically, I think this is, so data set would be the disk. So that would be, then media would be the share, yeah, the folder that you would then share. So let's do that. Okay, so let's try Windows Share again. So we don't want to turn that on. Configure services, so basically it's work group, that's good, so let's cancel that. Uh, go back to shares, add. There's our Olympic, we go down one, there's our media folder, so that's what we want, media, blah, blah, blah. Okay, save, so we can enable it. Oh. Ours is a going to be just on my home network. So we're going to add all items there. Now, if you're exposing this to the internet, uh, don't do this. But right now, I'm just trying to see how to figure out how to do this. And oh, interesting. So even though I didn't click add it, it is running. And so data protection, so our snapshots, replication, smart test for our disk. So we're not going to do that now. Networking, everything looks good there. Credentials, if we want to add a user, let's do that. Jeff. So we have to do a password. User ID is 3000, auxiliary groups. We're going to add that to root. If we want a home directory, let's do that. It's going to be Olympic. And then we click Save. Now we're going to cancel that, so we're going to skip the home directory thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, here we go. So we pick that. And then create new home directory. Save. Okay, good. So we now have root admin and Jeff. So let's check to see if that share is available on our local network now. And so there we have our true NAS. So let's double click that. Oh, connection failed, connect as. So we have to change our username and password. And then click connect. And there's our media folder. And let's see. Okay, let's create a folder. Oh, we can't write to the folder now. Okay, so we just needed to change our data set. And so and now we have read, write, access. And let's just delete that. Delete. Yes. Okay, perfect. And so let's see, oh, so now we're down to virtualization. So let's add a virtual machine, guest operating system, Linux, name, Debian, description, Debian. So even though we couldn't and said it couldn't install it, we did, but now we're having an error in the installation of Debian. So we're going to skip that right now, but we can do that. So apps. And so let's see. So we have new and updated apps. Is there what, anyway? Oh, 106 apps available. Uh, how do we show all the apps? 
Oh, there we go. So we have to click up refresh apps there. And basically there they are. And now uh, Debian use is Kubernetes instead of Docker. So it's a little more difficult to install things. But they have seem to have the general things that most people have or need. And if you want to install more uh, apps, you can install true charts, uh, which will add hundreds of more things. And so we're not going to do that right now, but it's there. Then we have reporting. And this is actually much prettier than Open Media Vault is. And so here we have CPU and disk. All sorts of information there. Then we can do memory, network, system, and ZFS. And then under system, we have there's our updates, general, which tells us about. True NAS looks like and advanced console configuration kernel Chrome jobs boot tells us something about the boot environment oh scrub boot pool boot pool status and oh it's interesting you can't go back there huh okay and then we have services and then we have shell, so the shell environment, and alerts. So what do I think of TrueNAS scale? And so basically, it is definitely different than Open Media Vault. It, in some parts, it doesn't make as much sense, but maybe I'm just used to Open Media Vault. But I think what I'm going to do is try this a little more and see if I can get a better hang of it because they actually use sort of different words here to do different things like data sets and they have them in sort of a different order so open media vault has everything sort of logically listed down where this one sometimes not so logically like things are in different spots than you would think they would be but it's actually better than true nas core so when i tried that a few years ago i was completely bonkers how things were. So they've definitely tried to simplify it and make it more sense. So if, is this right for you? Well, if you uh, have a Raspberry Pi, the answer is no, because uh, it does not support uh, ARM processors. So I bet that in the future they will start supporting ARM processors because the whole industry is starting to move that way. So they will expand to that just not right now maybe in a year or two so we'll have to come back and do a follow-up video when they uh, do do that and i'll say i told you so if you just have an x86 computer then this is perfect you can use this just as it is it actually works much better if you have lots of disks uh, because you can create pools open me all again if you have a simple system that's great for that because you can do it all on one disk. Uh, you can do that on true NAS core or scale, but it is complicated. And if you're really interested in learning how to do that, having true NAS all on one disk, uh, put a comment down below that you want to do that, or actually put a comment down below if you like Open Media Vault or true NAS better. That's it for today. Hope you found this helpful. Make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.